One of the things about time-based tables, temporal tables, no rows are ever deleted. They're logically deleted. When you query them with the SQL, you won't see them unless you use special SQL in front to see them, and you'll get a chance to see that. We're going to see this in action. I'm going to give you an explanation, and I'm going to give you a chance to guess how this is going to change. 99% of the people miss it. Let's see if you can get this. On February 14th, Valentine's Day, Tara Tom sold property 100 to a gentleman named Socrates. That guy thought he knew everything. Well, we do an update statement and we say update property owners, set customer number equals to two where property number equals 100. And now this is going to be updated in the database. Now let me just give you a couple of clues. Here's the row when Tara Tom owned this and there was only one row in the table before this update statement. Now, as you can see down here, the only thing that can ever change in a row of a bi-temporal table is the last column transaction time. If they want to do any insert updates or deletes, they'll just modify that last part of the period and then they'll insert another row with the updated information. That's your clue. So after Socrates bought this and we did the update statement, my question to you is how many rows will now be in our table and what will those rows look like exactly? If you've never seen this information before, it's not going to be clear as a bell, but I have not made a mistake here. And you might understand as we go on to go, I get it, Tom, I get it here. Now, at the top, we show the one row in the table before the update occurred. How many rows are in the table after the update? Three. Let's take a look at it. Now remember, the only thing that's ever modified in a row is the last transaction time part of the period statement. So we can see here that that row did not change whatsoever except it shows that on February 14th that row was closed because that's when Tara Tom sold this to Socrates. Now another row is inserted, row number two, that's almost the same. This is, yes, it's customer number one, it's property 100, but notice now the valid time. It says Tom owned this from January 1st ah, to February 14th. And as you can see here in the transaction time, it shows that this was actually opened on the 14th, but then the transaction time says 9999-1231. You would have thought that was closed, but there's no mistake there. And you'll see this later. Now, we finally come to the third row, which says customer two owns property 100. They bought this on February 14. They're gonna own it forever. It actually has the transaction time, even though the actual time's not there, the date. And again, they own it forever, which means it's still open. Now take a look at this. There are three rows in our table, and somebody runs a query and they say, select asterisk, all columns, from the property owner's table. How many rows come back? One. Socrates is the only person that came back because that's the only open row. Let's take a look at this. This is another very confusing question. Let's look at the first two rows. Why didn't they come back? Well, it's very simple. We look at the first row and we go, that row's closed. How do you know? Well, because the transaction time shows that Tom owned it January 1st to February 14th. That's closed. We know that's not coming back. 
but the second row at the very end of transaction time has 999-1231. You would think that's open, but it's not because the valid time portion of this says, oh, Tom owned it from January 1st, and then it closed February 14th. If either the transaction time or the valid time have any close, then that record is considered closed. This lesson brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Need a query tool that makes joins easy? The Nexus has a join builder that turns the most complex joins into child's play. The Nexus Query Chameleon, making connections easy again. Visit coughingdw.com for more information.